All right, guys, we are back for another session. Uh, today's a pull day, and I'm again training with the big man, Rymar. Uh, their biases isn't so cut and dry with pull days as it is with leg days or push days, but if you wanted to put a bias on it, I would say today is a upper back bias day, uh, but we'll take you through everything as we run through the session. Okay, so this is an extremely simple drill, but essentially the methodology is that when we're doing upper back movements, whether those be rowing based or pull down based, uh, the commonality is that we want to be able to effectively articulate our scaps from a pro uh, tractor position to a retractor position. So before we actually get under load, we're kind of just going to drill that under some form of resistance. So what we're going to do here is a banded retraction. So we're just going to sit up with good posture, rib cage slightly uh, stacked over the pelvis. We're going to keep our chest tall, and we're just going to let this band pull us forward into protraction. And then without actually rowing, we're going to keep our arms relatively straight. We're just going to drive our shoulder blades or our scaps back as far as we can into retraction. And we're going to slowly return to pro. We're just going to move between these two positions a couple, for a couple reps. And then once we're done that, we're going to hang and then move through elevation and depression as well. And that, that alone, just those two quick drills, should get us primed for our first movement, which is going to be a bilateral dumbbell upper back row. Using our movement at the scaff. Let it pull you forward, slow, slow, slow. back rows. Main thing we're trying to do with these is one, exaggerate positioning and two, exaggerate the range of motion, particularly how far we're letting the dumbbells pull us into the length and range, which is why you're going to see us so bent over and why you're going to see us purposely let those pull us as far as we can into protraction in the bottom. Okay, holding that exaggerated position is also going to put our bracing on trial to a greater degree than it would be if we were more upright. So it's also going to handicap our capacity to load these just a little bit, but we'll make up for, the, for that uh, later in the session, which you'll see as well. Come on. 
120, yes. but if he fails at nine, I'm not doing it. <laughs> five. Hey, 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 I got 10. Oh, you got 10? <laughs> okay. Don't sell me short like that. I think I got 10. If I hope got I got 10. 10. If he got 10, I'd probably get a five or six. So that's why 110 was a good decision. If I didn't get 10, put it in the comments and make me feel bad for not being good at math. machine row if you look at the way we're moving through this you'll notice the patterning the elbow path is very similar to what we were just doing with the dumbbells but this is externally supported so the output that we lost over there because our bracing couldn't keep up with our strength and our capacity to actually load that movement we can now make up for that here where bracing isn't going to be the rate limiter to the sets that we're going to move through Good. 
more. Good, more. Good, again. Come on, come on. Again, again. Hard. Again. One more. Hard. Good. Oh, my back. That really sucks when you can't let go right away. <laughs> okay, so so far in the session, we've mentioned more than once the importance of being able to effectively move our scaps specifically into position where they're fully protracted. But keep in mind, that was in a conversation going over upper back movements. Whereas now we're moving into a lat row, we don't want to allow as much freedom as our, at our scaps. Well, because doing that, will bring into play a lot of the musculature in our upper backs, which when we're trying to bias the lat, we don't want that to happen. So what we're gonna try and do is think about keeping as much distance down between the shoulder, our shoulder and our ear. We're gonna lock into a neutral grip, which is easy on this because we're gonna be actually fixed into neutral grip. And we're not gonna let the load pull us up into protraction to a point where our shoulder is starting to rise up and our, our scap is starting to fall forward. We want to keep a, a bit more of a strict posture to actually bias the line. Just find angles to make us look not so small. No. actually something I've noticed with some of my clients over time if they miss a week or two of sending me movement video for, for video critique and they're not yet at the point where I'm confident in the way they're executing especially with something like a single arm row they end up over here like that lean can get excessive because we feel stronger but it just takes off the lap so it's being diligent and like where am I leaning where am I keeping my elbow? Getting it to a point where you're actually driving in a straight line with a relatively upright torso. So you'll notice we have a mag grip set up for this with D handles added. The reason for that, technically, you could do this with the fixed grip on the mag grip. You could also use a straight bar, but it doesn't allow our grip to naturally move to where it wants to be and where we're gonna feel strongest. So having the D handles added gives our, our grip that little bit of freedom to sit where it may, so we can feel as comfortable as we can as we move through the movement.
Come on, come on, come on, come on. I got it. I got it. Fucking strong, man. How? 195. Holy shit. A couple reps short of where I should have been, but. That's okay. Nine? Eight or nine. And you want to get 12? Yeah, should have been, but that's okay. about what the lat actually wants to do, which is move our shoulder through extension with our elbow in tight, close to our body. Doing a pullover unilaterally on a cable actually lines us up better to target the lat than a pullover machine would where we're in a pronated grip with flared elbows. So we moved to this because we don't have a pullover machine, but really I would probably move to this anyways because it works a lot better for what we're trying to do with biasing the lat. theme today between biasing the upper back, biasing the lat, or now with what we're about to do, which is going to be biasing the rear delt. And that's what are we doing at our scaps, right? So really a big part of our ability to bias a particular portion of the back is going to be dictated by what we're doing at the scap. So with a rear delt row, which I'm about to do, we want the scaps to be locked in as fixed of a position as possible. So what I do is I retract my scaps, slightly elevate them, kind of bunch them up into the back of my neck and try and hold that position and then just move through the row without actually moving into protraction. The reason for that is just because I don't want the musculature through my upper back coming in to try and take control of my scap. So the, the better job I can do at actually locking that in place, the better job I can do at biasing the rear delt.
Good. Keep those calves retracted. Keep them back there. Good. Keep going. Come on. Yep. Easy. Stay in it. Come on now. Yep. Good. Walk in. Come on. Good. Keep the shoulders back. Good. Good. Come on. Come on. Again. Okay, so single arm cable laterals. The way we see a lot of people set these up is they put the cable cam as far down as it can go. They grab onto the actual stack with their non-working hand. They lean over and they fly out here. Issue with this is, this is gonna be heaviest wherever the cable is closest to perpendicular with the joint that we're working, right? So there's relatively a 90 degree angle between my arm and the cable here, which would really be the top position of this style of cable lateral, meaning it's gonna be hardest at the top. Where that's counterintuitive is when you do a dumbbell lateral, a dumbbell lateral is hardest in the top, and chances are we're gonna have both in. So why not rather use the cable to change where we're challenging the movement. So for us, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift the cable cam to the point where, I'll just put the handle back on, to the point where in the starting position, it's relatively at 90 degrees instead of in the finish position. So now it's gonna be the heaviest in the starting position, which is gonna be biasing the length and range rather than the shortened range that we're biasing with something like a dumbbell lateral, which having both in your program now allows you to challenge both.
I don't typically have a bicep on my pull day because usually on my pull day I always do hamstrings after because I have my own arm day but adding a little bit of like extra sets here and there for more frequency in a week is also helpful. To the point he was just making, he doesn't need the added volume or frequency for his biceps because you can obviously see the size of his arms. They're a strong point for him. So him just having it on an arm day makes a lot of sense. For me, my arms are a weak point and considering that smaller muscle groups like biceps, like the triceps, like the delts even, like the rear delts even, they recover extremely quickly, so we can train them very frequently. And that frequency is going to be partially dependent on whether or not we need it. For me, I need it. So every upper body day, I'm seeing some form of bicep work because one of my goals uh, to bring up this off season is going to be my bicep. So pull days, I see it, push days, I see it, and I also have an arm day of my own as well. For Rymark, it makes sense for him to just have it on an arm day because it's a strength of his. It's not something he's looking to bring up. So we're, especially on a pull day, he already mentioned in the intro, he's trying to bring up his back, so he's gonna favor volume there over his biceps. Team Vadim, if you watch this, this is what you say. Uh, there's a guy on my team who will say that when he's tired. He'll just be like, yeah, I'm currently sleeping right now. Like midway into a conversation is the funniest thing. So that's what you just reminded me of. <laughs> currently sleeping. All right, guys, that is it for today's pull day. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something. And obviously for all the suggestions and tips that we gave to the exercise, hope I hope that it will help your workout routine as well. And again, thank you, Calvin, for today's session. Learned a lot. That's it. Until next time.